Yes. <laughs> ah, yeah. It's live. It's live. You should be talking. Good morning, guys. Today I I studying my first week for my for chocolate. This is what we this is what we did in the school. This is the first chocolate I made. You see that? It's very nice. Today I just learning for the chocolate. Making hot, making the chocolate. So I just explained to you first how to make the chocolate. This is for the week one, the first like first chapter lesson. The chocolate is a rolls or sweetener, and in there's a rolls for like sweetener can and sweeteners and confectioners and the playboards talking about playboards preservatives curating agents and home homectant and bulking agent and the source of crystallization And it is the confectioner's ingredients. Con, uh, the ingredients is there is a like sucrose. It looks like a crystal. It comes from sugar cane or sugar base. No longer any difference between of them. And then one of the purest food substances available. Sucrose tends to crystallize in a high concentrations, over 67%. Therefore, there is seldom use of itself in confection. It is also available in the wide range of crystal size, in addition to the powered confectioner's sugar. And the other ingredients is called molasses. It's a product of the sugar refining process used primarily is for with its distinctive flavor. Brown extensively during cooking for Millard-like browning. It is available in a varying degrees of darkness. And all molasses for human consumption comes from sugar cane, not in the sugar best bits. <laughs> it's many things to know. And it's the other ingredients is the brown sugar. It's a commercial brown sugar is made by fully refining sugar, then adding some molasses back to the refined sugar. Molasses gives brown sugar its colored and flavor and increases the sugar hygro, high hygrocopicity, high hygro, hygroscopicity, <laughs> and increases the sugar's high hygroscopicity. It's turbinado sugar is another type of brown sugar that is made by leavening some of the molasses in the sugar during refining. So this is all kinds of the chocolate ingredients. So is now I I learned that chocolate is worth to be buy if it is expensive because it is very difficult. It's not difficult, but 
You just need the patience to make it. There is another ingredient is called inverted invert sugar made by splitting sucrose into fructose and dextrose either by using an acid or by enzymatic activity. Is the sweeten sweeter than sucrose and could contributes to Millard browning. It helps to prevent crystallization sucrose. Inverse sugar is, a, is far more soluble than sucrose and so increase the, the dissolved solid of confections in extending their soft life. So it's talking about the, the life of the chocolate. Glucose syrup is named for nutritive sweetener made through hydro hydrolysis of starch. They, they, they may be made from any type of edible starch. Corn syrup, corn syrup, glucose syrup made from corn starch. Dextrose equivalence is the specification by which glucose syrup are purchased. Dextrose is a measurement of how completely a starch has been converted into simple sugar. The more completely the starch is broken down, the higher the dextrose rating. The dextrose of glucose syrup has pro profound effects on its working characteristics. Like 42 dextrose syrup is the most commonly used glucose syrup in confectioner. Especially specialty syrup such as a high maltose and high fructose, fructose syrup are available for specific uses. Another, uh, another ingredient of the sweetener for chocolate is called honey. Honey is produced by, by bees from a gathered nectar. Honey has a carbohydrate profile nearly identical to that of invert sugar. The color and flavor of honey is greatly affected by the flowers from which nectar was gathered. In confectioner, honey is used mainly for flavor and purposes. And the other is the, another sweetener is the maple syrup. Maple syrup and sugar are both made by removing water from the sap of the sugar maple tree. Thus con concentrating the sugar content. The sugar found in maple syrup is almost completely sucrose. Maple syrup splayboard color and affected in, in by, by the climate, soil, time, time of year, and cooking procedure. Maple syrup flavor or color is affected by the climate, soil, time, and the cooking procedure. The higher, the higher the grade of maple syrup, the lighter flavor and color. Then another, another, this one is the confectioner fats ingredients called cacao, co cocoa butter. Cocoa butter is the fat naturally occurs in cocoa beans. 
Cocoa butter has a narrow melting range that is just below normal body temperature. Cocoa butter is expensive and due to its polymosphericism, difficult to work with. Butter is either added directly or through use by a diary product containing butter fat. Butter is a water in the fat emulsion. Butter is contains both milk solid and lactose, therefore browns due to mellard browning. When combining with cocoa butter, the combined fat has melting point lower than that of cacao butter alone. Butter fat is permissible ingredients in the manufacture of American dark chocolate and it's used as a bloom inhibitor. So all this we need to learn about the sugar, the sweeteners, and the fats. Now I'm talking about the fats ingredients. Lauric fats. Fats are also known as uh, tropical fats. Example are coconut fat and palm kernel oil. Coconut fat is most commonly used by confectioner. When combined with cocoa butter, lauric fats create an eutectic that melts at a lower temperature than either fat alone. And the other product, the other ingredients is called the dairy products. Dairy products, fresh products, the defining difference between fresh dairy products is the fat content. Fresh dairy products are relatively expensive, high in water, and require refrigeration for storage, but usually offer support superior flavor to the processed dairy products. While range of dairy products may be used in confectionery, fresh dairy should always be used in making ganache. This we learn, making ganache. Dairy products is, is a cultured Cultured products like yogurt, sour cream, buttermilk, buttermilk have a little use of confectionery due to their tendency to curdle when heated. It is processed. The product must be processed. Evaporated milk and sweetened condensed milk are commonly used in confectionery due to the lower water content and easy to storage. They are particularly well suited to make cooks, yogurt, and confectioner as a caramel and fads. It's interesting. It's a lot of ingredients. And then it's talking also about the confectioner ingredients for flavoring and color agent and flavor. Manufactured flavor fall into two general categories, the natural and the artificial. The, the chemicals used to make natural flavors are from permitted food sources. The chemicals used the chemicals used to make artificial flavor and from other source open petroleum. Manufactured flavors should be generally avoided by artisan confectioner expect in hard candies and other application where their use is nearly necessary. Organic acids such as cit citric, malic, or tartaric Acids are sometimes used as flavoring agent to offset sweetener.
colors fall into two general categories, fat soluble and water soluble. Fat soluble colors are used for coloring cocoa, butter, or chocolate. Water soluble colors are used for coloring aqueous cysteine such as a hard candy. Flavoring for the color agents and like nuts and seeds. Frequently used as flavor and are often roasted first to, the, to improve their flavor. Due to their high fat content, nuts are prone to randicity and must be purchased in a small quantity and stored properly. Water is the flavoring and color agents in water. Water is a vital ingredient in most of confectionery, solvent for sugar, medium for reactions such as a Millard browning and inversion, a defining picture of emulsions. The amount of total water affects the firmers of finished confection. It is its control by cooking syrup to concentrate to the sugar contents. Free water, water that is chemically unbound. Free water limits the shelf life of the confections. And the other is called bound water. Bound water is uh, that is uh, chemically bound to another substances, usually sugar. It is not available and does not limit the shelf life. <coughs> Water may differ from location to location in water, pH, and mineral content, and it will therefore cause differential result, particularly in cooked sugar confections. The equipments. The Confectionary equipments. The equipments need of confectioner vary depending upon the types of product and volume being produced. Little special equipment is needed to produce small quantities of most confections as a, spe as a specialization and volume increase, more equipment and machinery can be used to streamline production and increase deficiency, efficiency. So this, these are all about the, the ingredients for the making chocolate, making chocolate and like candies, sugar, sugar confectioners. And there is a very special equipments for every production. So this is we talking about the how to make the confectioner, candies, sugars and chocolates. Just this is just the beginning of the lesson. <laughs> Then the, this the cacao versus cocoa. 
cacao versus cocoa because cacao cacao is the name for the tree it's called tub, tubor, tubroma cacao and as a raw products of that tree cocoa is the name for those products after the fermentation of the beans so this the cacao versus cocoa from bean to bar a cacao cacao agriculture chocolate manufacture is a similar to wine making both rely on agricultural product require fermentation both contains few ingredients both can result in a very wide range of styles of product from the pedestrian to sublime cacao is grown fermented and dried in remote regions usually beyond control of the manufacturers but this is very interesting because cacao will grow up in Philippines. So I'm very interested to learn about chocolate. So I'm learning how to process. And there are three types of cacao agriculture. That, that are grown. One is Criollo, the highest quality, low yielding, prone to disease. The, the second is Poristaro, usually bulk quality, high yielding, resistant to disease. The third is trini, Trinitario, a hybrid of other two varieties, processing some qualities of its parent. Oh, interesting. These are generally seasons that do not hold up under all circumstances. And then is the we need a fermentation fermentation takes place immediately after harvest on the plantation product on the plantation produces flavor precursors that are necessary for development of the chocolate flavor And, and then after fermentation, you had to, to dry. Drying takes place immediately after fermentation <sighs> to stop the fermentation at the proper time. Mix the beans stable for storage and shipping so that they do not mold. Drying in the sun is, a, is prepared method when possible. So this is very good for in Philippines because we can dry, we can ferment place from the whole cacao and then open and ferment the seeds and then dry under the sun for the for the prepared method. It's very good. It's the most good methods for drying the cacao. And then when making chocolate, there is uh, other ingredients like chocolate liquors, the name used for ground cocoa beans without anything else added. Oh, bean liquors, from bean liquors. Also a legal name for unsweetened chocolate. It's a liquor which is 100% cacao.
and then the other ingredients is a cacao butter, the naturally occurring fat in cocoa beans, extra cocoa butter is added to chocolate to improve its viscosity. The, its qualities include an a narrow melting range that is just below normal normal body temperature. It remains firm and melts quickly in the mouth. It is brittle at room temperature. It contracts when it sits. Making is useful for molding. The difficulties with cacao butter. It is very expensive. It is difficult to work with. It is required tempering. Cocoa butter does not contribute to chocolate flavor. Cocoa butter from inferior brands is not much different from cacao butter taken from gold quality beans. Therefore, cocoa butter is usually pressed from less expensive beans. And then the another ingredients in the chocolate is sugar. The sugar in chocolate is almost always sucrose. It is not dissolved, but is ground to a very small particle size to result in a smooth mouthfeel. And then in the other ingredients is the milk solid. It is required in milk and a white chocolate and are permissible in American dark chocolate up to 12% of the total chocolate. Then the butter fat. Butter fat is present in the milk solid and it milk and in milk and white chocolate. It is inhibits by crystallization of the cocoa butter. So milk and white chocolate, chocolate must be worked with a lower temperature than dark chocolates. Chocolate butter fat is primarily used as a bloom inhibitor. And then the other flavor, other ingredients in the chocolate uh, is a flavoring and lecithin. Flavoring is vanilla or vanillin are the most commonly used flavoring in chocolate. Any natural or artificial flavor may be used long as it is declared on the level. level and it does not make me the flavor of the chocolate. Lecithin is extracted from soybeans, added to chocolate in very small quantities to improve the viscosity. From the bin to bar at the manufacturer process, cleaning impurities such as sticks and stone must be removed from the bins. Blending must blending most of the chocolate made is from a blend of beans. Single origin chocolate is a very recent phenomenon and is largely for marketing purposes. Roasting fermented cocoa beans creates chocolate flavor and aroma. Unfermented cocoa beans will not create chocolate flavor even when roasting. Maybe perform on a whole beans, nibs, or liquor. Different roasting degrees leads to different flavor profile.
the process is micro micronizing called micronizing breaking up the beans results in cocoa nibs and shells and there is called winnowing the process of separating the shells from the nib and then the next is the grinding or milling scratching the nib to make chocolate Chocolate liquor used in two distinctively different process. Pressing separates the cocoa butter from cacao powder. Usually, less expensive beans are used for this, mixing into the batches of chocolate. Refining. Refining is reducing particle size so that a smooth mouthfeel will be created. After refining, the chocolate is dry paste. And then the next is, the next process is conching. Process of applying heat, agitation, and exposure to oxygen. Remove moisture from chocolate. By volatile acid from chocolate and improves the viscosity by coating the individual particles with cocoa butter. Tempering. Tempering, depositing, and cooling. All chocolate that is sold in solid form must be tempered, deposited, or molded and called to solidify. Dutching and processing. An optional step or alkalizing the cacao. It makes the cacao darker in color and less sour. It is often used for cacao powder, but not often used in making chocolate. Is need to avoid excessive heat of 50 degrees Celsius max for the dark chocolate. Avoid moisture. A small amount of moisture will thicken chocolate. Work environment should be about 20 degrees Celsius and low humidity. Store chocolate away from light and humidity in a cold place. Dark chocolate has a shelf life of about 12 months. Milk and white chocolates have a shelf life of about only six months. So white chocolate is lower life than dark chocolate. Dark chocolate is takes one year, the life shelf, and the white is only six, year, six months. <clears throat> there is also a use and handling of chocolate guidelines. Incorrectly handled chocolate forms bloom. It calls a uh, fat bloom and sugar bloom. Fat bloom caused by improper tempering of or storage at too high a temperature. Sugar bloom caused by exposure to moisture excessive humidity so calls humidity high temperature storage is called fat bloom and uh, <coughs> exhaust, exposure moisture or excessive humidity it's called sugar bloom And there are various cacao products types. It's called coating and coverture. Coating is chocolate that has other fat added in place of the cocoa butter. Generally, it requires no tempering. European coating are known as a patty a glazer. Patty glazer. 
Coverture is European term with no legal standing in the U.S. denotes. U.S. denotes chocolate of the highest quality with a high cacao butter content. That's why, that's why American chocolate is very good. The percentage listed in the sum of the amount of chocolate, liquor, and cacao butter, the only information the person gives in the relative sweetness of the chocolate, not viscosity, not quality. And then also there's a selecting chocolate overview like flavor, viscosity, economics. Flavor is different chocolates may be better suited for different flavors combination. Viscosity is especially important for dipping. Viscosity is for dipping. Viscosity controls the thickness of the shells. So we're doing this, all of this. Economic, economics, vitally important to every business. The cost of the chocolate plays a crucial role in whether it is viable for the operation. So I, as I learned from the first day is we learn tempering, and then we learn how how to balance the temperature for for the white chocolate and the dark chocolate, and there is a different temperature for the white chocolate and and the dark chocolate. So we remember that the dark chocolate it will not be over 50 degrees, so we are doing degrees Celsius. So we are temperating for the dark chocolate to low down into like 27 degrees Celsius. And to maintain that is we're making for the coating chocolate. The white chocolate is White chocolate coating is is lower temperature. It is it will not over thirty three degree Celsius, and that is for the white coating chocolate. And we are learning also to make the chocolate ganas and the white chocolate ganas. White chocolate ganas, you, we flavor with rum and then process. And it is very need patient, especially for the coating. You need to put the, the ganas white chocolate into the tempering dark chocolate and then you need to, you need to sink 10 times and then dry for five times and then you have to slide on the screen to, to, to dry and then put in the parchment paper to, to dry. And then after like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, that the real chocolate results out there and it's ready to eat, and then it's it is very interesting. It's rare. It's really, really real chocolate. It is when I buy it is really very, very delicious. The white chocolate canas is very delicious with rum. You can taste the rum in the chocolate, and the chocolate canas is very. It's very, very moist inside and 
and the brittle outside the shell. The shell is so brittle. So that's why the chocolate is is called. It takes longer lifetime shell, and uh, the white chocolate is shorter life shell. It is very very nice to learn, but it is very very need a very high patient for making chocolate. That's why. I realize how it's difficult to make. So I think it's worth to buy the expensive chocolate, real chocolate. It is really not easy to do. It need a lot of patience. So this is the first week I learned. So I hope you I hope you enjoy listening and you enjoy watching and to be continued. I still have, we still have a lot to learn and to, and to study about chocolate and confectioner like candies. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy and please don't forget don't forget to subscribe and like my YouTube YouTube channel. And see you next next week. See you next week. I have to give you more time for this to learn about making chocolate and sugar confectioner. This is just the starting of my lesson. So now we are understanding first the ingredients, how to process, and how to, 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 to know about all the ingredients. So in the future, I show you how to make chocolate. Thank you for watching and bye-bye. See you next week.